So just any seated position. Remember that we're creatures of habit, so sit your legs around so that you start off at least in your non-habitual way and we'll switch them a few times as we get into our warm-ups. So remember always sitting bones are connected. The spine is stacked above that, crown to the ceiling. You've got that core connecting, so ribs in and up, keeping that area in the middle of your body for support on your spine, but still letting your breathing fully expand through the lungs. So breathing deep, drawing air awareness inward, keeping your yoga perspective. Exhaling completely, letting the tension go. And just allowing that inner focus to be your guide as we go through today's practice. And then let's just use the ribs as our guide to just kind of circle around. And sitting bones stay where they are and the shoulders pretty much where they are, just in that midsection working a little bit to kind of energize you. Because this is going to be needing a little bit of energy as we go through today's practice. And then stop and go the opposite direction, just kind of bringing the bottom ribs around to the side, to the back, to the other side, to the front. Just feeling how that midsection starts warming up. And then back to the center and into our forward bend. So ribs back, rounding forward, tucking your chin, just get the stretch going along the back of your body. And then inhaling, lift the heart, rotate the face toward the ceiling, keep the shoulders dropping down. And a few times going through that range of motion, just getting the spine opening and working, because we're gonna be working with the spine a lot today. So just breathe and relax. Maximize the stretch and the opening. And then come back to neutral. And we'll stretch to the side. So one hand down, the other arm out. Palm toward the ceiling. Bring the arm over your shoulder. Slide over to the side. Keep both sitting bones, both hips down. Reach out through your head and your fingertips. Kind of keep that whole side stretching straight and open. You can bring the elbow down for a little bit more intensity if you like it, or not, your choice. And then inhale, coming back up. Exhale that arm down, and switch your legs around so that we can go the other way. Fingertips down, opposite arm out. Palm toward the ceiling, over your shoulders. Both the shoulders staying down. Slide to the side. Just open through the ribs, lengthen through the oblique, and breathe up through the top of your head and hand. Keep the hips down. Bend your elbow if you like the extra or not, your choice. And then again on an inhalation, slide up and exhale back to your seated position. Take one hand to the opposite knee, other arm out at shoulder level for our twist. Remember, sitting bones, base of the spine go down. Base of the skull and crown up, stretch it apart through your spine, and then into the twist, turning your whole body, hips, ribs, and shoulder. And again, lengthening, breathing in, and exhaling and deepening as much or as little as your body needs at this moment. And then bring your hand back up, follow it back to the center, and release. Feel your spine a little bit more energized and switch your legs one more time to twist the opposite direction. Again, take the hand to your knee and the other arm at shoulder level. Stretch up through your spine, exhale, and So the whole body is turning. Bring your hand down close to you on the floor. Stretch from your sitting bones up. Exhale, hips, ribs, and shoulder a little deeper if that's what your body needs. So take a moment and breathe. And then again, bring your hand up, exhaling back into the center, just feeling your whole body. And you can stay in a cross-leg position, or you can bring your legs out in front and staff, or you can come up on your knees 
and sink back hips to your heels to get a little ankle and foot stretch because we kind of neglect them sometimes. So remember, you can put padding under if you need, under your ankles or your knees if you're in your knee position. We're gonna work the neck. So go ahead and bring the, the, the chin into that indentation jugular notch at the base of your throat. So the whole spine stays straight except through the neck. You wanna get a good stretch going there. So bring one hand up, add weight, not pressure, and then the other hand, same thing, weight, not pressure on the back of your head. And just breathe, exhale, and let your chin sink a little deeper with each exhalation. So go ahead and allow your body just to deepen as much as feels right for you. And then bringing the hands back down, tip your chin back up. Feel the back of your neck, maybe a little bit more stretched. We'll work the throat, so bring the chin up. Tighten and stretch through that front of your throat. And then releasing. And then move your jaw around. Kind of Neanderthal your jaw out and back. And then circle it around. Scrunch up your face. And then release back to neutral. Tip your head back up. So keep lengthening through that base of the skull all the time. One ear over to the side, just letting the opposite area along your shoulder and the neck stretch out. And then bring that hand you're tipping toward up. Again, weight, not pressure. Just let it stretch a little bit more. If you need more, you can bring your hand down to the floor with your fingertips or your palm, depending on how much you need. And again, just relax into it, no pressure, keep both shoulders down. And then the hand dip that's down, bring it back to your left. The one that's up, also bring it back and tip your head back up. Feel the difference on the two sides, so we need to balance the body. And tip over to the opposite side. And again, as you're in that position, just relax your neck. Bring your hand up, positioned, not pressuring, just adding a little weight. And then the other hand, if you want, comes down, fingertips, or more into the heel of your palm, if that works for you. Take a moment and relax. And again, hand to your lap, the other one down to your lap, and then your head back up. And then if you're kneeling, you can come up and tuck your toes under, and that'll be a little bit more intense on the toes, but gets the bottom of your feet a good stretch. So feel free at any point to release that if you need to. And we're gonna circle, or we're gonna turn into the twist position with the neck. So again, spine stays straight, reach up through the crown, and then turn your chin toward one shoulder, and look toward whatever's behind you. Take a breath, keep lengthening always up, letting that spine have room to twist. Exhale and deepening as much or as little as your neck needs. Shoulders stay facing the front. And then keep lengthening up, and exhale, turning back to the center. Keep relaxing through the toes, through the spine, through the midsection, that core activated for support. Lengthening again up, exhale, turn your chin to the other side. Once again, just breathe, stretching as much or as little as feels okay for you. Keep lengthening, keep breathing, keep allowing your body to turn through the neck only for this twist. And then returning back to the center. If you're up on your toes, go ahead and release them. And just bring your body down into child's pose. Just take a moment, let everything relax. And then inhaling, come up on your heels. 
So the next thing we're going to do is pretty intense on your neck. It's a deep forward bend for your neck. It's called rabbit. So before we do that, we're going to open the chest a little bit so that you have a little bit of contrast for what you're doing. So bring your hands behind you and press your, your clasp your hands together, heels of the palms together if you want, or keep them apart, and then press your knuckles toward the floor, feeling the expansion across your chest. And then we're just going to pivot forward, bringing your hands up, bend your head down toward the floor. So just breathe and relax, deepening, letting those arms come up. And then inhaling, sit back on your heels and release your arms. Just take a moment feeling across the chest how that's working. And we're doing the same thing, but clasping the opposite way. So opposite finger on the outside. So again, hands down toward the floor, chest rising, opening across the heart, pivoting, exhaling, coming forward, a little kneeling yoga mudra, coming into that forward bend. Up in your chin, top of the head down toward the floor. And then again, inhaling, coming back up, releasing your arms, and again, just feeling your body. So the next thing we're going to do is a little bit more intense. Similar positioning, and it's going to be very hard for me to talk because it's going to be very constricted through the lungs. So it's a little harder to breathe, a little harder to talk. We're going to come up on the toes, just like we were in our earlier practice. And then we're going to bring the hands onto the heels. So just clasp your hands around the heels with the thumbs on the outside. Lift up through your heart, and then as you exhale, pivot forward and bring the crown, the top of your head to the floor. So your hips will lift up, that's okay. And just get that chin tucking in. And then if you're okay in that position, slide your knees toward your forehead and roll a little bit more onto the top of your head. So it's very intense along the back of your neck. Just breathe and relax into it. Feel the stretch along the back of your body. And then when you're ready to release, put your toes back down and sink your hips back toward your heels and just forehead toward the floor in resting child's pose. Take a moment and breathe. And then again, inhale and sit up. Bring your hands on the mat behind you and just expand your heart toward the ceiling, looking up, chest toward the ceiling. So your fingertips are toward your knees, your heart is toward the ceiling, your head is just reaching straight back, or you can tip it back a little bit more into a little bit of a back bend. And then chin coming toward your chest, inhaling and sitting back upright. And then slide off and bring your legs out to the front. Sitting bones connected. Now roll back onto your back. So just a moment of reclined integration. Just allow your body to sink and soften just a little bit into that surface view. So the next things we're going to do again are pretty intense on the shoulders and the neck. If you've got a big curve to your neck, you may want to blink it behind you. So I've got to my blanket to demonstrate. So if you've got a blanket, it's really useful because you can fold it to many different amounts of depth. So if you've got a big Curve to your neck, you'll want it folded more. Less fold, you'll want it a little bit lower. And if you don't have much of a curve, like Jessica probably doesn't, then you probably won't need it. But bring the blanket under you and place your shoulders on the edge of the blanket so your head is just off of it. And that will release the strain on the back of your neck a little bit as we go up into shoulder stand. If you don't need the blanket, you don't need it. Just put it aside and 
Allow your body just to relax on the mat. So as we get ready to go up, remember that a little rolling motion sometimes helps people get up into shoulder span. So feel free if you need to sit up and take a roll, you can do that. But first I'm gonna demonstrate without it. So press your back down, bend your knees, bring the heels in near your hips, Slide your sitting bones toward your heels, get your whole back connected. And have your hands, palms down at your side. And then exhale and bring your legs up and support yourself with your hands on your lower back. So you keep your hips bent and the legs going out at an angle. This is half shoulder stand. So your head is on the floor, not your neck and your shoulders are supported. Now, if this feels okay and you wanna go up into full shoulder stand, you're gonna to want to bring your hands more toward your shoulder blades and your elbows toward each other. So your chin is tucked into that notch again at the base of your throat, the back of your head stays on the floor and your shoulders are supporting you as you bring your legs up toward the ceiling. If that gets to be too much, you can bring your, bend your knees and bring them down toward your forehead. And then putting your hands on the floor, whether your legs are up or not, you're just gonna roll back down onto the mat. So take a moment there, just breathe. You can put your hands under your hips Put your elbows down and just lift up with your heart a little bit into a kind of baby fish. And then release back down. Take a moment, feeling your body, noticing how that looks. So, if shoulder stand was okay for you, we're going to keep doing that a little bit with some variations. If shoulder stand was a little bit too much for you, you may want to just go into pulling your knees toward your heart, maybe one at a time, and then both at a time, and just bring your forehead occasionally up toward your knees for that upper body forward back. If you're ready to go back into shoulder stand, once again, bring your back onto the mat, hands to the mat, and kick your feet up. Now, if that's not working for you without a little bit more momentum, you can come all the way up to a seated position and you can roll back and get a little bit more momentum going up into the shoulder stand. Some people find that useful. So go ahead and find your shoulder stand, whatever this position you want, whether half or full, either way works. And then we're going to do a little twist. So go ahead and turn your whole body from your shoulders all the way up to your feet to one side, and then back to the center, and then to the other side. And then come back to the center, and we're going to work from the shoulder stand into plow position. So if you're still at the half shoulder stand with your legs bent, that's fine. Or you can be up in full shoulder stand. We're going to bring one foot down toward the floor behind you. If it gets there, fine. If it doesn't, that's okay too. Just go wherever you can. Be up on your shoulders, back of the head on the floor, and your body just supported with your hands. And then if you brought one foot all the way down, bring it back up, and let's do the other one. So again, foot to the floor, or as close as it wants to be. Remember, everything's still staying alive. And then bring that foot again back. Up. If you want to go into full plow, it's again a little bit more intense and constricting in the lungs, so you make your choice. You can just go into half shoulder stand, you can lower toward the floor, or you can bring your feet all the way down. If your feet are all the way down, you can release and come up a little deeper onto your shoulders by clasping your hands and pressing your arms into the floor and lifting those hips. So, base of the toes to the floor, pressing out through the heels if you're in full plow. Or 
you can stay with just one leg at a time. And again, deepen as much or as little as it's right for you. You can bring your hands back for support to come back to shoulder stand anytime you want. You can kind of cross the legs around and see how that is, working your legs without strain to your knees into different positions. And when you're ready to release, just bending your knees toward your forehead, hands to the floor, rolling your body back onto the mat. And again, as you get back to the floor, just go ahead, extending those legs out and taking a moment of refined integration, relaxing. Deep breaths, just exhaling. And once again, maybe a little back bend to counteract all those forward bends. So hands under your hips, pull those elbows in towards your ribs, towards your waist. Hands, palms down, flat on the floor. Bring your shoulders to the mat. And then pushing into your arms and hands, lift up your upper body and look at your feet. And then for full fish, we're going to lift the heart, lift the chest, lift the chin, and drop the crown of your head down toward the floor, coming into that upper body back bend. If that doesn't work for you, you can stay on your arms and just allow your head to be in the direction of the floor. If it's all the way to the floor and you like the back bend, you can release your hands, bring them up toward the ceiling or onto your ribs with the heels of the palm. Take a moment and breathe, fingertips toward the ceiling if your arms are up. And again, just allow your body to be in whichever position is right for you. When you're ready to release, bring your arms down. You can again bring the thumbs underneath to lift the upper body. You look at your toes and again roll all the way onto your back. Take a moment there and just take a moment to breathe. A little reclined intervention. And then again, pressing your Sin bones toward your heels. We're going to bend the knees and draw the heels in near your sin bones. Take a moment there and just allow that back of your body to sink down toward the floor. And then lift the ribs, rolling onto the sitting bones, getting that space under your body for a little bit of a lower back back bend. And then again, pressing down. And lifting the ribs up. And just a few times doing that core toning and back straightening. And then releasing your feet back out. And again, slide the heel, sitting bones toward the heels. And then keeping the back press down, draw one knee up toward your heart and hug the knee. Take a moment there, just allowing your body to deepen into that stretch. And exhale, release that leg. Press the back down again. Draw that other knee in. And again, wrap your hands around and hug it in toward your body. Exhale and release. And keeping the back down one more time, draw that first leg in. And then hand to the inside, draw that knee out toward the side. Just let the hip open a little bit. Take a breath, just relax. And then hand to the outside of that knee, draw it back up, pull it back in. Bring your forehead toward the knee. And your head back to the mat. And release that leg. Take a moment and breathe. Feel that side. And we'll do the other one. Sitting bones toward your heels. Pull the knee in. Give it a little hug. Hand inside the knee. Just draw that knee out. Give the hip a little opening. Other hips staying down as you let that knee come over toward the side. 
only as much as feels right for your body. And then again, hand to the outside of the knee, draw it back up, and hug it down. Exhale, forehead toward that knee, as much or as little as it wants to go. And again, releasing your head, release your hands, and bring the leg back. Take a moment, feel your body. And of course, we do that both ways together if you're ready for that. So sitting bones toward your heels, back connected, bending your knees, draw them in toward you. Take a moment and relax. Exhale, forehead up toward your knees. And release. Hands to the floor. And feet back in. Extend the legs back out. Take a moment and relax. Feel your body. And once again, sitting bones toward your heels, bending your knees, drawing those heels close to your body. Exhale, press the back down, lift the knees above your hips, and bring your arms out to T position. Palms up or palms down, remember, no choice. Palms down keeps the shoulders a little bit more stable. And then with the knees above the hips, just roll over to one side, turn your head toward the opposite side. Just release and relax through your spine, coming into your twist as much or as little as you want. The knees come toward the floor. You can bring your toes down if you'd like a little support, or use that blanket under your legs for a little extra support. Head turning toward the arm behind you, shoulders and shoulder blades down on the mat. Just relax, deepening into your twist, however much is good for your body. And then heels back towards your hips, rolling onto your back, and getting ready for the opposite side. Once again, just take a moment there, reposition as much as you need to, and then roll the knees toward the other direction. Turning your head toward that arm behind you. Again, knees as much or as little toward the floor as your body is willing to stand. Take a moment and breathe. Check those shoulders and shoulder blades. Keep them down. Let your head turn as much as it wants so the neck and shoulder get the twist as well. Breathe deep. Tension out. And then heels toward your hips, roll onto your back. Once more, press the back down, wrap your arms around, bring your forehead up, and give yourself that good appreciative hug. Head back to the floor, hands down, and feet to the floor, extending your legs out. Hands, palms up into corpse position. And just take a moment to breathe. Exhale, retention. And just allow yourself to release and relax into that surface beneath you. Belly moving with the breath. And we'll do a little guided relaxation today. So we use the body pretty intensely. Just let everything release. Allow your shoulders to sink down. Your hands releasing slightly away from your sides. Knees and toes up toward the ceiling or slightly out to the sides, whatever is good for you. Right in your corpse position on the back side. You can keep the knees bent, remember, your lower back needs that. And then focus on your toes, kind of crunch them up together, tighten your feet, hold it as you hold your breath. And then as you exhale, release your feet. And next, bring your awareness to your calves. Tighten your calves, kind of flex your feet, tighten your calves a little bit more. Again, draw the breath there and hold it along with the tension. And then as you exhale, release your legs. As just looking away. And then your whole lower body, tighten your thighs, your buttocks, your whole leg, 
Flex your feet, tense and tighten, breathe into it and hold that breath there. And as you exhale, the lower body just relaxes. Breathe deep, let the tension out. Bring your focus to your belly, to your torso. Tense and tighten through those abdominals, through the chest, through the whole torso and front. Tighten your fingers into a fist. Tighten your shoulders and your arms. Lift those hands up. Push them away. Tighten your whole torso and upper body. Exhale. Breathe deep. Relax all your torso, shoulders, arms, and arms. Focus on your face, your jaw, your throat. Scrunch up your face, squish your lips together, bring your chin toward your chest, tighten the neck, tighten your face, tighten your scalp. Breathe into it and hold it. And exhale and release. Feel your whole body soften. Just let it sink deeper, heavier into that with your voice. As you breathe, just let your body go. Feel all the release. Let it relax. And as you breathe deep, just allow your body to sink even further into that with your voice. And as your body relaxes completely, just let thoughts of your body release from your awareness. Know that other thoughts will come to your mind. Just let them go as well. As each thought comes to you, just let it drift away without attention to the contents. Remember, it's the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. It's your choice when you pay attention. Let the memories of the past go. Forget the future. Just allow the breath to guide you into the release of any thoughts. Lifting away out of mind. Completely unaware of any thoughts. And as you breathe more deeply and your body sinks more fully, your mind releases lighter, clear, and tethered to any thought. Just let your awareness release completely both your body and your mind. Focus inward, find that peace within. Deepen into the peace, completely relaxing. Filling your body with peace, just a mindful peace. Being
Né? Então, tem um nível de humor, de relaxation, de dor, de você pode relaxar. Or if you need to come back to the present, just draw energy and awareness back to the body. Breathing more deeply, moving your body gently, however, works for you. As you stretch more fully and breathe more completely, when you're ready, press your back down, draw your knees in for that final hug of appreciation. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work it does for you every day. And when you're ready, just roll to the side, sitting back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead today for you. Thanks for joining me.